DMV, DC, Baltimore. Is that included in the acronym? I don't fucking know. But what I know is I will be there Friday, July 16th at Brooklyn on You for a fun ass happy hour with y'all niggas. I'm doing that shit. I might even smoke a hookah with you bitches. Okay. It's giving. I might have to throw up and someone will hold my braids. That's how fucked up I plan on getting. But what I will tell you is it's a sex sells watch party. Sorry, Fuse. I will be getting that lit. And... It's an unseen episode. We are doing hella vaccinated shit, my nigga, okay? Popping my pussy on the bar type shit. Go to the link in the description of this episode to get your tickets. Go to my Instagram, WSweezy, what's my name? Weezy WTF, and the link gonna be in that bitch too. I will see y'all hoes. Meet and greet is included for everybody. Let's go. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Horrible Decisions. Oh, my wonderful goodness. I'm your host, Mandy B, and I'm sitting here with my co-ho. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> to the person that said I'm getting arrogant on this show. Oh, wait, somebody said that? I think it's my attitude towards Mandy. And really, it's because she makes me feel so uncomfortable sometimes. That's why. And in this particular moment, if you were just an audio listener, she has a hello of a donut. With a banana inside of it, and she's putting it in and out. That's my donut. Wait, actually, and not in this context. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the plush. Do you want me to poke you in the hole? I'm okay, thank you. Okay. Now, we <laughs> Say have... Say your name, bitch, with your arrogant ass. See, even Weezy just expect y'all to know who the fuck she is. She, so I thought you said it's my co-host. I said your co-host. Oh, I thought you said my... And I didn't even say your name. But like, you just expected with your arrogant ass. Up. I'm just playing. She <laughs> <laughs> said, Google me, baby. I'm Wheezy, and what we really need to do is give a super warm welcome to one of our favorite guests. He is like Horrible Decisions family in a way. And Not in a way, bitch. I see him more than some of my friends. <laughs> Shit. Well, I mean, because I feel like we have it's such true. separate true, relationships true. that we probably talk about you maybe every other week. Like, they're tired of Yeah, it. they're probably they tired are. of hearing like, about please you. Please stop talking about this, man. Guys, <laughs> for y'all who do not know, he is a former guest on the pod. And last time he, he joined us, we talked about religion. Right. Um, but we are joined yet again with Daniel Saint, who is the owner of NSFW, which is the sex club I constantly talk about going to. Um, I told that Mandy is my second home. I was like, do you want to like, are you sure you want to do this with Daniel? Like, because you go all the time. Like, are you sure? It's like, yeah, sp- secrets can be spilled. Because There's even a at- lot of things to be aware of. <laughs> <laughs> we had to have a conversation before. It's like, all right, so like, what's, what's, what's real? What's oh, real? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, like, I, I showed Daniel my text messages. Like, oh, my God, look what's going on right now. What do I do? And then actually Daniel was the one as well who got me comfortable with the threesome that I had uh, the first time playing outside of the club. How did, what do Daniel, you mean? Like, you comfortable? Well, Daniel gave me some tips because I was just like, you know, when I was looking for a unicorn, uh, I was just like, I went to Daniel and I was like, do I have to take her out? Like, I'm, I'm nervous because I feel like I got to wine and dine the bitch out. She has to wine and dine. She's like, do I, I have like, to like take them to dinner? Do I have to buy them a bag? Because I didn't like, want to do all do? of that. I didn't like, want to do all that. these girls? I'm like, you don't have to do all and that. And he said, he said a lot <laughs> of like them it. just want to have sex. <laughs> I mean, you know you that. You can do those things. But. Yeah, but like if I were to be entered into like a dynamic, like I said, even, even any threesome that essentially has happened with me and another guy, it's come after. A, a rock star night of strip clubs they're lavish oh, dinner right. you, you've, you've mentioned that it wasn't with intent yet, yet yeah there's never been intent but like a guy has always showed the girl so much time that she was just like willing to join us and a lot of these being my friends and being guys that I was just fucking it was different because it's like no I was looking for a unicorn to come into a relationship so I thought I had to create the dynamic like what you and um, Old Bay or you and Loverboy have done in the past I was kind of going off of what you've done. You always say you got to at least feed the I bitches. I love one, but I'm in two. <laughs> which at I still end. believe. I at the this. end. Yeah. <laughs> Uber too. Like, it's so fun when you're like laying in mess and you're like, do you guys, you want salmon avocado roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, w- I actually just had a thought that came to my mind. When it comes to your sex, right? Do you feel like you're at the point where you're starting to enjoy having sex with others more than alone or like just in private, like because you're just around it so much. What feels I don't more masturbate anymore? So it's kind of I haven't masturbated in like four or five months. Wow. Wow. I, so I really ha- like I just I have partners. Because you people. that's what didn't I tell I you like, that bitch? Why'd you start hitting me? <laughs> no, because she came in because I was like, 
I don't is even ma- masturbate anymore. Healthy. It's well, masturbation month. Masturbate. It's important. Yes. But like, but yeah, you. I like. I just you get enough day, sex. You know, like it's like. I, I just, just waited. Yeah. I, just, I love masturbating though. I know. I love masturbating. We, we know. Too, we know, not- Weezy. We know. We know. <laughs> you want to know a secret? What? Oh Jesus! What oh got? my God! <laughs> Technically, oh fuse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I was on the clock. Technically, I wasn't clocked in because they paid me a rate, like a talent fee, and to do the, my role and produce or whatever. But I did masturbate the night of the taping of Sex Cells at NSFW in the bathroom. Just hear me out for a moment. Wait, oh my I god! Do- at the ba- <laughs> look, look. I okay, let's, it's- I had to make sure the mic was off. Good, good, good. Strong. Um, I learned from the sound guys. Shout out to Mike taking care of the mic. I remember his name. That it was the easiest thing. Mike with the mics. Nice. Um, before we actually did, was it? No, it was before we did the strip club thing. I mean, the the stripper pole yeah, thing. Yeah. I just was interviewing people, laying in bed with them. Everybody was so attractive. The vibe was going. Daniel offered me a drink. Then someone offered me a little bit of mushrooms. And mind you, I am still on the clock at this point. Oh, my God. But I felt like it was part of just, like, the whole experience. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I just didn't know what was going on. I was feeling really hot. I was wearing leather and glitter. And I just had to get it out. I mean, and I did. I, I don't, I in don't the think shower. there's anything wrong with that. I think it made the episode better. <laughs> I think people might have sure. smelled it on me. I, oh my! They, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. I love the smell of the my pharamones, pussy. Pheromones. Like, That's yeah, what I mean. Full pheromones, like all released. But and yeah, his shower is so huge at the at the uh, clubhouse, and I was like, okay, if somebody walked in the bathroom on accident, I could just be in the shower acting like I was taking a shower, but I'm fucking myself. As much as I go, I don't think I've seen anyone use the shower. Um, Ironically. Yeah, I mean, there's it depends. If like there's a show or something, then people use the shower. Okay. But the all male events, they use the shower a lot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. Tell us why. Here you go. Here you go. Nah, but why? <laughs> Just to clean up and stuff. You know? Yeah. More juices, more fluids. Clearly. I did masturbate there. And even that was a nice ambiance. There was That's a red great, light. Yeah. It made me feel like I felt how we I love the ambiance. And when I came out, you know when you feel like someone knows? <laughs> this guy was like, you okay? <laughs> so I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, is someone going to think I'm taking a shit? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have thought. You cannot take a shit at the sex club, bro. Like, that's got to be the worst feeling ever. Please don't. Right? <laughs> it's okay if you do. But. but we were there for eight hours. You know, they ordered, they catered, they had lunch come, and I was like, yeah. damn, what if I'm going to have to go? Has anyone ever, like, have you had any, like, gross accidents? Yeah. <laughs> you have? Someone broke the toilet like two yeah, weeks ago. That. We posted it. It was like, y'all went hard. They like ripped it off the wall. I, I saw that. How I saw they that. did that. And then I was upset because then I ended up going shortly after yeah. and there was only one fucking bathroom. And I'm like, damn, now there's a line. <laughs> <laughs> Not used to a line. There's normally two options. But yeah. how do you break a toilet? I don't know. They was fucking on that thing or something. Oh, they yeah. were probably fucking on the toilet. I, I hope so. Do you find that people ever like use the bathroom for sex, even though you have so many beds? Yeah, they use the bathroom for sex a lot. And we have signs up that say like, please don't fuck in the bathroom <laughs> for that exact reason. I wanted to actually ask you. So for those of you who are listening to this and may not have, gotten back in the archive uh to daniel's episode nsfw is very kink friendly and i i was wondering because we talk about so many uh kinks that are messy are there kinks that are off limits in at at nsfw i mean we we try to stay away from blood play um it might be part of a performance it might be something that's part of a a show or something that we're doing but it's okay we may so Weezy can't go there on her period because she loves well, I mean, to fuck on her period. No, fucking your period is fine. <laughs> Wait, like, that's fine. That's okay. Yo, people do that. That happens. That's like that's kind of like expected almost. Like Aww. someone's not oh. gonna mi- someone's I, not gonna miss a night for that. I, like, I miss nights I for c- that. I, c- I couldn't do it. <laughs> there's definitely there's I'm definitely not some girls who are okay with that. Um, I'm okay with it, just not in front of everybody. But yeah, piss play in the shower, and then like yeah, we have like these new like mats we just got that are like these. Like absorbent, like tarp. yeah, tarps, the round tarps. It's called like the the pillow or the bellow or something. And it's just we have I love them now that for name. sale. But it's like you just throw it down. So like whenever there's like you know a wet girl, like here you go, <laughs> like you, you're gonna you be squirting. Squirt yes. <laughs> like here, here uh, you go. <laughs> Take a pad. It's okay. Bounty. <laughs> no. So blood play, no, and blood play, no. I mean, yeah, stay away from. What scat about scat? Play. Oh, you uh, stay away from I scat. Mean, I, we we don't really. I don't really engage in too much scat play. Good. <laughs> Have Good. you ever been around when it was going on? No, no. I mean, like, 
you go to like gay like circuit parties and like there's gonna be some shit. Tell but. us what a circuit party is. Not Please, because I'm not. Well, I'm not familiar with what a circuit party is. A circuit party is like an, a rave for gay men. Everyone's like just you know gay. And <laughs> you know, I know all the circuit and days, fucking honey. everywhere, and they have like fish shows and stuff like that. We used to work with this group called the Black Party, um, and they do this whole like Caligula theme thing. So they had a Caligula night in the Bronx, like thousand gay guys. Oh, like, so I was saying it wrong the whole time. On, yeah, full on. I was scenes, saying it's like, not Caligula. Caligula, yeah, that's what they you call. You just it. said Caligula. Oh, Caligula, 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 Caligula. Sounds like my first yeah. name at the end. Caligula. It does. It does. <laughs> I'm about to start calling you that. Caligula. Okay, and so this was something like. And you were yeah, you watched the show yeah. and then everyone fucked or did you just no, go there? No, there's like rooms was... that you go fuck and they have like swings set up and it's just like it's like a party where you fuck. It's like it's really like that. Um, but yeah, we like a thousand dudes and like deep deep techno. A like thousand? Just, yeah. That reminds me of like Sex in the City days when I used to watch like here we go. Of them. Y'all knew y'all no, knew she was going to reference underwear it. parties and it was huge. I got kicked out of a circuit party. Why? Because you're you don't have a dick. Yes. Good. You're not supposed to be there. I mean, it was like a heavy drug night. I was in Bushwick. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like at this one place. I was at members only. And the guy was like, oh my God, babe, come with me. I'm going to a circuit party. I was like, oh, I'm going to go. So we go. I don't even know his name. We're in the car. I get out. Someone lets me in. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of it, people were looking at me kind of fucked up. And I was like, oh my God. Because they realized you weren't tucking shit and you had to <laughs> fucking go. Girl, That's what it was. The security guard comes over and he was just like... <laughs> Yeah, bad. You know, I'm like, you know, when people say bad, yeah. they're like, it being really <laughs> shady, bad. Um, I am so sorry. We're gonna need you to leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Finish your drink, but you just have to go. <laughs> it was, so, and I was so embarrassed, and I was like, like they didn't escort me out. Did you get your money back? No. You probably didn't pay to go in. <laughs> I. Oh, I paid for drink tickets. Okay. You know how that goes. Uh, but like, no, I, it was embarrassing. And then like when I was outside, I ran into someone. And they were like, come in with us. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these parties are really necessary, though, because the more I've learned about the gay community and spaces that are for them, you know, drag brunches have turned into a whole like bachelorette party. You're they've shown into, they turn into spectacles. Yeah. yeah. And this is someone's culture and their livelihood and their vibe. And in some cases, their sexuality, whether it be a circuit party. So like, I get it. Cause one girl goes and then she wants to bring her friends. Oh my God, we love going to gay parties. So nobody hits on us. Like girl, it's annoying. Oh no, that don't mean they don't hit on you. Cause it's true. Yeah. the gays you know, will women still. love to say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I wanted to. I, I wanted to talk about today. that. I mean, I'll be the one hitting on them. There. I, I did. Well, I did want to talk about that too. You, you, you consider yourself bisexual, correct? Yeah, or yeah. is there any other label under the umbrella that you identify as? Um, no, bisexual. I identify as dual, uh, like two spirit. Like I don't feel necessarily male or female like most of the time i feel like very you said dual spirited yeah like two spirit it's like a okay it's a it's a lgbtqia plus yeah it's i've a, never heard of that indigenous term it's like a, a being diano being native like kind of going back to you know what things were back then before settlers before colonization there was a lot before more, the whites yes <laughs> 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 Um, before that, there was, you know, people within these tribes that were considered two-spirit. They weren't necessarily male, not necessarily female, but they wouldn't call them trans because that didn't exist. It was just two-spirit, which is, you know, you have both of those, you know, kind of feelings. Like for me, NSW and the way I treat the membership is very motherly, very like caring, very like take care of these people, take care of the people who are in our membership and like really try to care, you know, really try to like you know, this isn't a customer. This is like someone that you're worried about or care about, or you instill that in other people and then people feel like it's family. So it's like those feelings in me are very, very strong. Like one of the things that, you know, I will regret is that I'll never be able to be pregnant. I'll never be able to have a child and never be able to experience that. And it's like, there is this longing inside of me to do that, but okay. I wouldn't consider myself trans, but two spirit is the thing that fits the best for me. That's interesting. I've never heard someone say that. Me neither. Like that they, wish they could have that feeling. I've heard women say that, that like can't get pregnant, but I've never thought the opposite. Actually, bro, I'm too spirited. I would love to know what it feels like to have a dick when it goes inside the pussy. I've, I didn't I got know one, what that feels like. I got too. one, like, but it's in my closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I don't really get to feel it. I get to see everything going on around it, but I've always wanted to know what it feels like for my dick to bust. Cause yeah. clearly my dick's just, I feel like it's got to feel like bust. an explosion. I had sex an with explosion. a condom recently. Cause like, you know, I mean, I have a main partner, but when he came, I felt it even in the condom. And I was like, 
Yo, that sh- you had to have fucking exploded Explo- in the con- <laughs> for me to feel it, and it wasn't broken. Yo, I was like, take that it out, was, take it out, take it out, lot. and I was like, stretch it out, make sure there's a hole in it. I was like, bro, that had to be so much cum, and I was like, I wish I knew what that felt like. Well, my guy does a little trick now. He makes a dick jump inside my pussy, bitch. I'm like, oh, you? It's the Kegel muscles. <laughs> yeah, no, Kegels. it's it, yeah. wait. Flexum. Oh wait, dicks, dicks have Kegels. Yeah, we have Kegels too. We're like, you knew that. Flexum. I did. I, I know. I know. Like bounce, you can bounce a dick. So yeah. I know when they make it right. jump, but I didn't know you could do that inside of a pussy. <laughs> Bitch, he did. I, I said, I feel what you're doing. That's what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get to our vanilla shit. <laughs> right. Guys, our vanilla shit, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, is essentially some sort of sex in the fucking news. And we're going to sit here and talk about it. Fucking news. All right. So. Uh, this week, it's not necessarily fucking, but I think this would be a really cool conversation for us to get into because we're all kind of liberal, but I have a little conservative opinion on this. Oh, God. A mom was busted at Six Flags after a guard says her shorts were too short in Colorado. She said, um... How short were those shorts? I want to know how Uh, short, bitch. So, it was in Oklahoma City. Sorry, it was a Colorado mom. And she said she was ruined by the horrific body shaming experience. I was terrified I was about to go to jail over a pair of shorts. You better get your check, bitch. From Six Flags. (laughs) I know that's right. She said the family trip went off the rails after her daughter was yelled at by a park police officer for rolling down a hill right on her heelys next to me. And when the guard came over, he proceeded to follow me, grab my shoulder to turn me around and say my shorts were too short. So here are the shorts. Um, I don't think bitch, she's sitting down. Like, bitch can't see. I want to see if the cheeks was out in the back. I, we, it's only her sitting down. But um, she said I committed no crime. I could, proceeded to walk to my boyfriend as I am autistic and I have a hard time talking to officers. She followed me, yelling me, calling for backup. The incompetent manager showed up and began body shaming me and was told I needed to go buy new shorts, which I am not obligated to purchase anything I don't want to. I was then threatened with criminal trespassing. Jesus. And finally, I agreed to buy new shorts. To I, I'm no, actually surprised they did this to a Becky. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I will say. Um, they don't look that short? They, that short they don't look that short the way the way the, the way these thighs and coochie be eating some shorts in the summertime because she's small now yeah, she's small that's why i'm i'm shocked i was shocked but i w- will say this uh i think what happened to her was ridiculous but if her cheeks were out like if i'm seeing bottom cheek i don't really think you should have like if you're in a kid-friendly space should there be a dress code and if there is a dress code like what would it be? Because airlines have dress codes. I was just about Can to say. Can you tell the story about your friend? I have I have a friend and she was wearing like leggings actually, but something about what she had on, they actually took her and my friend. My friend was dressed okay, but she the other girl was not. And they tapped her on the shoulder and was like, "Ma'am, you can't get on this flight dressed like that. Like you either have to go into your luggage and change or you're not allowed on this flight." And literally like they caused an uproar, but they ended up having to get onto another flight because they tried to fight it and literally the airline was like, "No, we're allowed to say that you can't come on the flight dressed like this." Interesting. And right? And and it was leggings. I mean, is it those leggings that it's like look, it has like those lines and shit and kind of shapes your ass? Oh, you talking <laughs> about little scrunchy the TikTok leggings? TikTok yeah. This was years ago, but years I would ago. assume they look like that. Uh, well, there was yeah, a lot, she, well, there was and, a lot of stuff with leggings early on when they first came out. Like people were like, "Oh, should some people be?" They did. You're right when they like, first came out. A lot uh, yeah. of shaming around like, "Oh, you could see through it," or and stuff. I mean, like even that. in like, even in corporate America, I know a lot of. uh Women tried to get away with wearing Jeggings. leggings. Well, and when I was w- when I was bigger, no, really, that's real. Well, and when I was bigger, buying pants that weren't too long, or it was really hard for me to shop. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would try to get away with leggings as much as I can. But those were things that corporate would be like, "That's against the dress code." It was literally in the handbook. Like leggings were a thing at one point that were looked at as like underclothes. I'm trying to look that- up the actual. Um- like dress code that it says Alaska airline actually says that anyone who is barefoot older than two years old cannot have an uncovered midriff. So bitch, I can't wear you a crop You can't even top. wear a tank top. I, I don't think the midriff is. Yeah, mid- that's what I meant. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are y'all, y'all know what the fuck it is. No, the but I, like, top. just don't try looking sexy anywhere you go. Honestly, <laughs> like, maybe but, what, what, but what is that for? Is it for the children? Is it because men don't know how to fucking keep their dicks soft? I don't so like everyone has barefoot. Then let's see. Uh, American Airlines says offensive clothing. Um, okay. I will tell you, though, I did have a shirt that said fuck the police on. 
And um, somebody was like, she was really nice about it, though. She was like, hey, I love your shirt. Bye. <laughs> she was cool. She was like, do you have a sweater or something? And I was like, for, and I didn't even realize that. I put it on. I get that. Delta, barefoot, um, attire, hygiene, or o- odor that's an unreasonable risk or, to, or annoyance to passengers. That's, that is fair. Unreasonable risk, is. yes. Now, Hawaiian I ain't going to tell you what country I was coming from. The whole plane stunk, bitch. And I was like, it's just this country, but I ain't going to. I don't want to get Don't. canceled. I want to get canceled. <laughs> Don't. But the whole plane, I was like, does the whole country smell like this? God damn. It was rancid, man. I was like, ain't nobody on People Gilbert. really do this barefoot shit. United Spirit, Southwest JetBlue. Everybody has mentioned being barefoot. Because people. white people... Yo, stop, Andy. Bro, for sure, they don't. But oh, but on planes, they love to take their, take their fucking shoes off. shoes off. That's oh, right. I didn't I think about that. I ain't gonna hold you. Then I'm half white, bitch. When I, when I have on socks. Bitch, I'll take my shoes off because I'm I'm little, so I'll get in my seat like this. Yeah, I this, get comfy in the seat. And so I, I take, take my shoes off. shoes off. I do with I would socks. I judge you. But you're not walking you to the bathroom me? barefoot. Oh, no, I you're not putting your feet up. There's some people be putting their feet up barefoot. I was I've thinking, seen that I was on a thinking plane. about that feet up like this. And I almost like, yeah, I was like, no. We You've have never to seen that in between the. Get out of here. You know how I, I, I put my I shoes on like, when stop it. Like, that was I, me. I, I do. Like, and then the nigga <laughs> because if I'm sitting That's on disgusting. the seat right here and I want the TV right here, I'd just be laid up like this. <laughs> I like, would go the fuck but off. My feet wasn't. I'd be sick. Mandy, be you're tight. telling me you go like this in, on someone's like, arm right? up. Wait. Spirit Airlines just like having it up. Oh, yeah. you're talking about if there's a chair in front of me like this? No, I'm talking about if I'm in like one of them seats like, because you know a bitch be flying first class. If I got the first seat, <laughs> A bitch gonna be like this because the TV right With there. With no now, shoes on? And I be lounged. They're socks. <laughs> socks aren't bad to me. Yeah, socks are fine. Saying, Not I barefoot. Be, I don't be Not whole barefoot. ass barefoot, but yeah. I also don't normally wear like sandals or heels. Yeah. Like I normally wear sneakers through the airport. Yeah. So I right. always have on fucking socks. I would flip out if I saw someone's barefoot on my... Like I've seen pictures of that where the foot yeah, be right here on your Oh no, arm. bitch. Your toe would be break, broken. Get your motherfucking feet That's what away I thought from you were me. talking about. Yeah, but I don't do it in front of, to seats where my feet is right. Okay, well, nah, and right. we are grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the question that, yeah, I wanted us all to debate. What do you think about a dress code for places where kids are normally at? Do you think that's Man, fair? fuck them kids. They all got booty cheeks. As long as it ain't a dick showing, a coochie showing, or like an areola showing, I think it's fine. Because they got all those same parts, and we should normalize the human body. That's my take. Fuck them kids. Go ahead. Go ahead, conservatives. <laughs> I can't even believe. I feel bad saying it, but like I could see someone being like, you can't have your ass out at Six Flags or Disney, bro. What yeah. about you, Daniel? I can see having. I mean, I think you have to respect the kids as much as possible. Why? I don't respect know. I feel like. The kids. Not, my I think kids, like, I don't because care. Because but... like, that's just, it, it's going to, I think sometimes it attracts like a lot of negative attention and I think that's not good. I think there's an a, appropriate way to dress when you're in kids spaces that is okay Shit. now like this girl with like I her think shorts, what you're wearing is fine for a kid's space yeah I'm fine with this <laughs> I might lose the leather um, the leather <laughs> I mean, yeah, that might the kilt isn't a problem and the leather isn't a problem I don't think it's revealing that's yeah, why I yeah. think it's bad as long as like my balls aren't out um, that's fine. I just feel like you should be able to wear whatever the fuck you want to wear so I, I didn't reason, choose it's to have only, kids why well, I gotta respect some nigglets that ain't come out of my coochie I'm gonna, I feel like kids but it's also like what are kids sp- safe spaces it's like, are you talking about a PTA meeting? Or are you talking about like the park? Like, if I'm going to go to the park, like let people wear what they want to fucking wear. Right, at the park. a Central a, Park, maybe, but not bro, like a maybe Disney. Maybe I'm going bro. as an adult to ride these motherfucking rides. I don't care about the kids. I just feel like I pack my motherfucking hundred and twenty dollar ticket. I'm going to raise my kids wear. differently, and if you're young and you really want to, I want to respect how people want to raise their kids. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. The only thing I'm gonna say is I had somebody look at me the other day because I was saying fuck, 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 and I was like, what the fuck is this bitch's problem? <laughs> And then I look and I said it out loud, like, cause she really was staring at me. I was like, what the fuck is her problem? And I looked down and she had a kid. These kids are on TikTok. Yeah, they've and heard Instagram. fuck. They've heard fuck. They've heard bitch. So, they've, they've seen some things because they now have, they start having iPads and phones from like three, four years old. Bro, you're not going to sit here and tell me I got to not talk how now, I talk. Cause I, I apologize. And after I apologize, cause I was on the phone, I was on my AirPod. I said, I don't even know how the fuck I said <laughs> <laughs> Because it's just like, maybe I was making her feel uncomfortable, but with my friends who have children, I don't know if you guys have had this experience, a few times with Sade, I'll be cursing around her daughter, and I'm like, I'm sorry. She's like, oh, this is my fucking house. It's okay. She can't speak that way. And I'm like, that's true. Do your friends, like, care if you curse in front of their kids or anything? No. uh, Shout out to Stacey. She just got mad. Uh, I was watching. You were talking about dick in front of her kid or something you said. It wasn't dick. I just said, Ty Dolla Sign is fine, and ooh, he's single now, girl. 
And I, I was talking about sliding in his DMs to her daughter. But t- it's Todd sign. He fine. How old is her daughter? I think she was 13 at the time. 14. Oh, she knows about sliding in DMs. You know what I mean? Like, that's not that crazy. But she was like, oh my God, Mandy, don't be talking ab- like, about her with men looking good and guys. And I was like, girl, it's Todd sign. Bitch, we all grew up liking NSYNC and B2K and all. I told y'all we... Yeah, I don't think I would get... Yeah, 13 is like... But she was like, girl... Like- also, I'm like hot mess, auntie. You know what I mean? Like my friends know. Shout out to AJ and Toy. I'm the godmother of their son. And I said to her recently, I got really emotional. They're both, she works in healthcare, right? He's in marketing and sales and they've got their own house and they're like this perfect black couple. And I was like, I feel like I'm a hot fucking mess. You are. You know? And she was like, she was so sweet. She was like, our son is going to know what you do. And we know that he's going to live a, a, a judgment free, like life, you know, um, have a judgment free relationship with you and he yeah. can come to you about anything. And that made me feel so appreciated because I do feel like a hoe, but I want to be a mom too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of become the cousin, like I'm the oldest cousin, but I become the cousin that all the other cousins come to for like sex questions. And, dog. and like straight up when I came out as bi, three other cousins came out as bi. So it was like this nice. Little that's Wait, is that a genetic thing? I don't, I mean, what? I think so. Cause me and all my genetic. sisters done dipped in dash. <laughs> <Yeah. So, laughs> I feel like this I thing, think it's a generational thing. Generational <laughs> thing? Oh, God. Okay. Mandy and I, when we first reconnected five years ago, I was like, oh, what's up with one of her sister's names? She was like, oh, girl, she gay as hell now. <laughs> 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 and I was like, let me go look at her, right? So I click on Instagram. I saw I said, follow back. I was like, damn, she is gay. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's get into our hors d'oeuvre. Yes. Now, sex tip of the week. I do think we should get pass it off to you since we're coming as your cousins. Think of us all as your cousins. I think it yes. could be for couples, singles, or maybe even first timers at your club. Just anything that comes to mind that you. Yeah, I'm um, first timers coming to the club. Uh, have a conversation with your partner. I think it's really important. I, I think a lot of people have gotten kind of used to this idea of like, oh, whatever. Like, I'm down for whatever. I'm down for whatever. And they they, they want to feel like they're they're there. You know, like I'm down for whatever, and it's like they aren't. Mm. You know, so I think it's very important to get beyond those kind of like baseline, whatever happens, happens, like, let's go with the flow. Stop having those types of conversations as vagueness, you, you would sex. Say. Vagueness is not going to help. OK, pick something small, pick some like easy goal. Like I'd like to make out with another you know, woman tonight. I'd like to, you know, have like this little like experience and go for that. And then if something else happens, that's great. But stop with the go with the flow. Stop with whatever you want. Stop with any of those conversations like if your partner is doing that to you, like stop, like, no, let's actually, talk I about really that. like, I like that. that a lot. I think that, you know, even Mandy was just saying how she had recently had a new conversation with her partner who she's been going to the sex club with for a long time. And I like hearing that honesty out of couples because no, it can't all be perfect. Every time you go, there's gotta be one thing you talk about, right? Like there has to be some kind of consent or even checking in, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. how's your, what, when you guys leave the club, what's your experience like? I mean, a lot of the times it is me and him. I push him to play um, more than I don't normally want to play with anyone else unless I play with girls. Um, but we've come to realize we have very different tastes in girls. Really? Mm-hmm. Tell, do oh tell. Oh, my God. It's so different. Like, I'll always go for, like, the eccentric girl with piercings or dress. Like, I like black girls like and that's who I'm drawn to every time I go to the club um and he'll just be like he now starts to know who I who I'm looking at before I even tell him that's fine and I'll be like damn and he's like I just I, he knows my type his type is different and so normally I'll just be like go out because everyone want to climb him every time I'm like well go for whoever you want um I think we go and he wants me to open up more to be with other like men but that's not something i really want so he'll be of course the men come to him with permission not knowing what we've talked about and i'm like well thank you for giving him permission but i don't want him so you know what i mean like he'll give the go because the men are respectful to where they'll approach him first to even before they cross the line because clearly we come together everyone sees that we're together um but I've had to tell him time and time again, I'm good. You fuck me enough. I'll be tired. I don't want no more dick. Yeah, you, no, you, like with a man like that, it's going to be hard to you, like you want another me? man. Like, it's the dominance. It's like that I've is already hard. reached the top of the mountain. You see? Like, the t- I don't need to spend time Mount in the foothills. Everest. I'm like, good. Damn, don't call the other men foothills. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I, I did have one thing that I thought about, right? Um, yes. When you were talking the other day, like, I don't want anyone else. I don't want anyone else. The most dominant guy I've ever been with made me feel like that. Not because I found him the most attractive or I was crazy in love with him, but like there was something about him that was making me always submit. Now with Old Bay, what's interesting is I'm not saying he isn't dominant. I totally sub out during our sex. He's super sexy. I think he's one of the best looking men I've ever fucked. I love fucking him. I love having threesomes with him. I think I'm more open to it because he's so fucking chill. Like he's not like this. I don't even see him get like that with other people. Like he's just really laid back. And I wonder if that is a little thing in my head that makes it easier to be open. Oh. Because when I've been with dom, dom, dom guys, I'm like, even when they're like, you good? I'll be like, no. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing too. I, I think it. it's funny because it's almost like the don't press that red button. And because you get told not to press that red button, you want to do it. And so I think because I finally have someone that is like, you can go out and have other dick. Just, you know, it has to be protected. Don't be emotional to this person. Like, yeah. um, now that I know I have the freedom to it, just be like, I mean, I'm good. I ain't, I ain't checking for it. Um, and yeah, so I mean, there are more conversations happening now um, in, in, you know, going to the club. When we go to the club, do we have to go together all the time? Can we go not? If you go, is that something that now you need to tell me? I mean, these are conversations now um, that are that are coming about. Because like I said, you really don't know how you'll react to something until it's there. I think it's just growing pains, too. In the beginning, you're just like, yeah, whatever. And then once you're really setting into the seriousness of your relationship, now you have to tighten it up sometimes. Because when you're so in love, like, I really think I forget shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, I've been so in love with my partner that I remember in a year and a half. He must have heard us talking about him. Just call <laughs> All right. Let's talk about NSFW. So um, I do want to ask your best experience at NSFW because you've had it all. Tell us about the best night you've ever had at your club. I mean, there's there's always good nights. Like, we do All Saints Day, which is, like, my birthday. Everyone dresses up religiously. It's, like, this crazy sacrilegious thing but recently we did a bacchus which is like a roman orgy it's a roman bacchanalia it's everyone dressed up. I missed that, that was the one with the flowers yeah it was the festival of flora and i had like honestly i felt like i had another life experience like i felt like i had been at this party before but maybe thousands of years ago wow. <laughs> i just had like this really strange moment of like I feel we did this in the woods once and like it just there was elements of it that, How high were you? that I was pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I met you in the woods before. I, was like, I feel you like I met high. you in the woods and we were all fucking there you was are goats high last high time. <laughs> like, yeah, there were goats last time. Yeah, there was oh, definitely Jesus. I don't know, it was a weird flashback. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> I had that moment, but it was just beautiful to watch. I, I think anything that we've been doing after COVID has felt very, very healing and much more um like I, I can feel how people's spirits are changing or how people's like feelings towards things are changing. And I think people kind of come into the space now, you know, initially it was like, it was just, you know, freedom and fun and like a great place to go. And then through COVID, through the lockdown, through the fear, through the trauma, now people coming back into the space, I can see how impactful it is. So I feel a lot more closer to the membership, a lot closer to what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish because I'm seeing how impactful it is after such a big trauma. Now, let me ask you, because, you know, they was real judgy that I was going to a sex club during COVID. Uh, <laughs> what what were the reactions that you felt from members or from people in the community that knew that you were still open to a sense? I mean, yeah. it was much more limited. Like I said, when, when I was going, I appreciated the more 12 to, to 20 people, 15 really was, yeah, yeah. was about the average. But now, like, I've gone on nights and like you said, max like 80 people in and out. There won't be maybe that many any at any one point, but in and out, because some people like the early times, some people come later. Right. And now it's it's becoming a lot more. But I want to ask you again, circling back, what were people's thoughts? Did you get any type of slack for keeping it open? Yeah. I mean, we opened up during phase four when all the other sex clubs in New York were starting to open up and we were Oh, because we of... just saw that in the New York posting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when that, when the other place like what does that mean? Indoor dining as well? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's you like, can eat it, me it, out like, inside. Was yeah, it yeah. indoor dining? Yeah, it's indoor that, dining. I think this counts as indoor dining. 
I'm pretty sure you're eating something. You're eating out, but you're in. So <laughs> eating that Buddha hole out. Eating that Buddha hole. No, I mean, I think there were some people who were concerned. Uh, when we reopened, it was in communication with the membership. Hey, we're doing this. If you've had COVID, if you you feel safe, if you've been in quarantine, I think for a lot of people, like there there's couple privilege that was coming through COVID. Like you have a partner, you have someone who you're having sex with regularly. They have single people who are like six months no touch. You know, six months, no interaction, six Ooh. months, no sex. And for a lot of those people who were being responsible and staying home and like, this is the there. only other place they're going to, you know, like then it's fine. Come be here, at least be around people and like get that feeling. Um, so I, I was really doing it for them. Like, I think during COVID, I got a lot of those dark messages. I got a lot of those, you know, people kind of like feeling like it's not going to end, feeling like things are getting worse or losing their jobs or just doing drugs way too much. Like a lot of excessive drug use through COVID that members were kind of, you know, joking about, but it's also like, you know, it's Monday, like mid afternoon, you shouldn't be coked up <laughs> right now. Right. You know, So there was a lot of things where I was becoming afraid of losing people. And I think when you get so close to a group of people and you're having sex and you're friends of friends and everyone's connected, like one loss does ripple and it does feel. And like early on in COVID, I had a friend who died from um, overdose, which was very, very difficult. And it was like the loneliness and the sadness. So, you know, I know there was people who felt like it was unsafe to open, but we did it in the ways that we could do it as safe as possible so that people could at least have a place to be, you know? And it's like something mm -hmm. familiar, like everything was taken away. New York was really, really shut New York down. was really dark, yeah. And it was really dark. So it's like just a little bit of hope I felt was important. You know, we didn't make much money. It was something to just, keep it open and do but um my, i don't know i think when you're getting those messages back to that too yeah like it felt embarrassing to admit that i didn't realize how much of my identity was not going out but more social interaction yeah and when we moved to mexico um i mean granted it was cheap as fuck to live there right so it wasn't like it was this big elaborate thing but i went to a jungle party maybe 50 people were there i was holding hands with people i didn't know i wasn't even high i'm like i know i did get high that night but it was really like, oh my God, like we get to hear music, we get to be together. When you're that person and it's taken from you, yeah. even with us, Mandy and I were touring, bro. Like we really enjoy our fans, you know what I mean? And a lot of people know, you know, we argue and fight a lot and the fucking fans really hold us together. So it was just like, damn, what are we going to do? COVID? <laughs> oh, I'm surprised the show made it through COVID. <laughs> oh, we was talking through lawyers for a couple months. I hated her then. Yeah, it was But now was that rough. part's over and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not there anymore. <laughs> but like, no, it feels really crazy when that is taken from you. Yeah. And like, I could see that. It sounds very frivolous. I could understand. Yeah, and I, I get why people think it's frivolous. It's like, but even for me, like I had such a fucking like, just cliff, you know, like doing you know, we do three parties a week. It's like three sex parties. That energy is like there three nights a week for five years, like over 500 sex parties that I've hosted. And then you just what? feel like, yeah, we've hosted, we've been around now for five years, three parties a week. You know, it's, it's a lot. And plus sometimes five parties a week, like, you know, we're constantly developing and doing. So, you know, to go from that feeling of like that energy, it's like a, it's like a battery. It feels like every party like it recharges you in a sense mm. like to see people happy to see people sexually happy to see people exploring to see people you know on their sexual journeys and like really flourishing and then to cut that all off you right know, for me it was like shit <laughs> Let's talk about some crazy shit so um tonight your sex sells episode premieres hopefully we're all watching it at the clubhouse yes. together yes but in there literally the conversation had so daniel is the only episode where it is no celebrities completely one business Okay. But I really, and we all felt like we have to explore this, right? People think it's illegal. And I want you to talk about that because it seems like we're always being secretive about it. Right? Yeah. Even yeah. in this moment, we're being secretive about it. It's not like you can she Google wanted to the call it a clubhouse, and I was like, "Can I say this is a sex?" <laughs> I only say clubhouse because you call yeah, it. Yeah, it's clubhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, location. I call it sex yeah, club. club. But like, is there a yeah? Can you tell us about how is this fucking place legal? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, the government has no right to tell you how you should fuck and who you should fuck and how many of those people you should fuck at one time. That's it. Like your bedroom is your, you know, your your bedroom is your space. I mean, there's there's regulations, there's laws, there's things that you have to put in place. We operate as a private members club. Um, because of that, we have different rules that we have to kind of follow. Um, it's almost like operating a golf club. And it's yeah. legal because <laughs> you don't charge for sex. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but even now, like now prostitution and massage parlors are not getting criminalized in New York. 
you know, there's a lot more talk around, you know, actual decriminalization and, and prostitution becoming legal. So there is, it, even if we did do that, it still wouldn't be illegal technically, mm -hmm. or we still wouldn't get prosecuted for it. Um, it more falls into like random stuff like trafficking. If you like bring someone from another state and stuff. So but, here's the thing with, with the sex club that I was going to. But we're not to, doing that. We're not selling yeah, anyway. No, like, the, the sex like, club that I was going to beforehand wasn't members only. So are there different guidelines from something that's maybe just more secretive? Would that be considered illegal? Because that is the one that, I mean, they had COVID violations uh, with yeah. so many people. But I want to know then, how does a members only situation differ legally from one that is not members only? I mean, nothing in particular. It's more about, you know, getting city approval for opening up spaces. So when it's a private members club, when it's members only, you can operate out of like live workspaces or places that you live in, which uh -huh. gives you certain legal protections. Like they can't just bust into your home and like, mm. know what's going on. Mm. So those things kind That's of protect us. But that if is. it's a you know a club on the you know street like a Caligula or something like that, like they have a liquor license, they have like right. parties, they have things coming in, they have regulations they have to worry about with the fire department, they have zoning rules that they have to consider. Um, because the, of the, the way we operate. Level. Wow, All I didn't know that. that. I didn't yeah. know that. Live either. work. Yeah. Have you ever had a cop knock on the door and have no idea that what you're doing is legal? Have you had to teach a cop before? Uh, I mean, I've been arrested. Like, honestly, we got raided in the old clubhouse. The cops, like, came in without a warrant. Uh, the fire, like, someone from acting like they were from the fire department came in and then invited, like, 40 cops to, like, walk through our space. These fucking police officers walked through. They were like, this must be his rape room. Like, could, oh, could, like really, what? they were like, this man needs Jesus. He needs to go to God. Like, I had him first. already. <laughs> yeah, like... Me and Jesus are good. We chill. A cop was really saying that? Yeah, no, it was disgusting. It was like, it was just 40 police officers just kind of raided through. And we didn't have anything illegal happening, but right. I had like a little bit of weed inside my bag. And this and they, was before the legalization of No, no, it was legal. New York's been decriminalized for a while in terms of oh, cannabis. Yeah. They're not supposed to prosecute, but oh. they that's what they got me on. So like, we're going to arrest you for this weed, like an ounce. Were, were, was it open? Was there a party going on? No, this was me alone in the clubhouse, oh, them wow. raiding in, 40 police officers without a warrant, coming through the space, looking through everything, took all our equipment, took our computers, took all this shit, arrested me, and like- You said it was a rape room? Yeah, they were like, this must be his rape room. As safe as you try to keep people, that would have that would have hurt my family. Oh yeah, wow. no, it was really hurtful. And like, you know, they got, you know, arrested me on something stupid and, then I have to like go to jail, was in like jail for like 24 hours almost. And like, you know, had to deal with all the legal fees and everything else like that. It got us kicked out of the space because they were like, you're operating like illegal operations with drugs. And it's like, I had some pot in my bag. Like you need to like calm the fuck down. This is obviously a gross misuse of power. Um, but Damn. that's how it is sometimes. I think for this space now, because you know, we were very good friends with the building. We're very good friends with the owners. Like we've been operating now for a year and a half. We haven't had a single issue with police officers. Um, and then we just got smarter about it where we just invited more police officers to be members and that's kind of protected us. <laughs> you said y'all can just come here and get your dick sucked and leave us alone. You know what? Take your badge off or make it a little dance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. Now it's like if you invite someone, please, and they will like let you know like, okay, here's what's going on in the area. Here's what's being said. But we, you know, we keep the noise low. That's the main reason that they would ever come. I know. Visit. I was that doop, 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 that the snake. Deep down. Did you see that, that video man posted? <laughs> video. I put on Cascade. Oh, yeah, she was sorry, like, I saw it. <laughs> this, this is the sex club music. This is the sex club music. I was like. You do be having yeah, some good it music is. in there. <laughs> it is so is. It's That's so how it be. Is. That's how it be. Um, okay. So. I want to know about an accident or an injury that's happened at NSFW. Has a doctor Ooh. ever been fucking? They had to run over and help somebody. Oh like, my God. what kind of injuries have happened? No, Has I a mean, plug been stuck and you had to help get it out or anything like that? You imagine there's some crazy things. We <laughs> did have the stripper pole <laughs> fell <gasps> once. Oh my God. Was this actually happened it? recently. No, some girl like kind of like ran up and jumped on it or something oh, and like kind of pulled it down. And like that thing came down. It has like this big disc. And I just, like watch it fall maybe like six inches away from a couple fucking i was like you could have fucking decapitated someone like this uh, is scary yeah that was bad that, and i've seen oh someone damn. swinging from yeah no 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 that, that stripper pole stays in place wrong. you have Bitch, to run and jump twir twirl on it with these thick old thighs so now we don't leave it up anymore it's like, it's, <laughs> it's like okay, now the stripper, it goes up for performances it comes down fucking? after the performances yeah they kept fucking it was like they almost died and she's still coming i'm like she's yeah. like <laughs> Good for you, girl. Good for you. That's some that shit, Weezy. I think Weezy said she, you liked that. Didn't you feel like you wanted to die before? <laughs> what? <laughs> she wanted to be drowned or something. I, I never you said that. This, I said I could see how. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> how people like like I said. Oh, auto. She said she wanted to be we drowned in Jamaica or something while I, being fucked. Jamaica, I, Jamaica. It's some water, bitch. No, Why not Mexico. <laughs> we had. It was aquaphilia. Was that it? Yeah. We did a kink of the week. I was like, I can see if you're fucking in the water. And then I think waterboarded just, came up. And I was like, not all the way, but just like a little in and out. She's like, so you want to die? Mandy, <laughs> Mandy rides the wave of die. extreme shit all the time. For example. What do I do? I For say example. I have sex on my period. She's like, wheezy and comes to your blood play night. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, funny because that's that is exactly, what she's saying. Those bro. aren't the jumps. Those are jumps. Bro, like, I, if I, say another one, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> doing me like that bro because I, this is how you say because i this is how i perceive it, bro okay? she said in front of fucking scissors one time um who's my ex-girlfriend we call her scissors what happened we were like uh when she came in we shout out to ty we were at his studio a few times oh yeah recording in harlem and she walks in she was like she be eating your pussy on her period huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, fuck <laughs> did i do that yes <laughs> and she was just like what do you be telling her I'm it, like, it's no. okay it's no worse than fucking felon bay coming to a live show and she's saying oh you're felon bay <laughs> bro can, let you call this nigga a felon to his face i don't call him a felon to his face he, I said fell in bay. She out of the bay. You, because important. people come up to my boyfriend, baby, like, oh, are you old bay? Old bay is not as bad as talking about someone's criminal record. Would you rather be called literally what you are or old? <laughs> are you saying 43 is not he's old? He's old, bro. 43 <laughs> He old. was old when we was he, in our 20s. He's and younger than right. your man. That, it don't matter. So. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't give my nigga the nickname Old Bay, bro. Do you know how? And people, the first thing what they is say is like, "Oh my god, you do not." He's my nigga, my man, not, not, my boyfriend. Bro, when not we tree, don't even not tree bay. It should be Tree Bay. Tree, tree, tree bay. bay. When we had I fucking that one of the girls at the club calls him refrigerator, oh. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I mean, because he's like as big as the refrigerator in his sex." Bro, club. this is him. He does not look forty three, obviously, no, wait, but no, Mandy wait, fucking wait. calls him Old Bay, and it's I mean, like, bruh. If, mind you, she the fact that we old. don't have a nickname for her boyfriend, she, she, Lisa Ann is here, and I'm like, oh my god, Mandy's. I'm like, please don't let her say my nigga again. Me and my nigga, and I'm like, oh, Why? I can't say nigga because she white on the couch. I, Sometimes I, I just feel uncomfortable when like, well, it, they know they can't say it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. all that's really important. <laughs> I, I want to make them feel Fair. uncomfortable. You want they to make Lisa black people feel uncomfortable of all of our lives. And Lisa's sitting there like, <laughs> when I have sex with brothers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember she said that uh, okay. her and so wait, and I was like, Lisa has a sweetheart. We worked with her. I love her. We, love, we, love, we went and had lunch after, no, and she met, my, she, she met my nigga. She met my nigga. Oh my God. She did this whole, like, we did an ASMR erotica where it's like, we. She had to have been adorable with that. She was great. We wrote the scripts of their porn. So we found one of their best scenes and, like, wrote this whole erotic <laughs> story around it. And then they had to read it while it was, like, playing behind them. Yeah. And Cute her idea. just spilling all the secrets of, like, what's happening behind the scenes. Like, this guy who I never fuck in real life. Like,. <laughs> I just straight up like, damn, Lisa. Dude, she is so tiny and adorable. She's super yeah. tiny. And she, I don't know who she reminds me of, or I don't want to use the word. It's very like sisterly. Like whenever she's excited about something, she would touch Mandy. Right? You can, and you, you know, can say auntie. I was going to say that. I know. It's I fine. thought you were going to say mom. I was. Yeah. Mom. I was like, yeah. don't say auntie. Don't say mom. mom. You can say auntie. Stop making auntie negative. I don't like that I'm an auntie, word. baby. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I am technically really an auntie. Have you ever been embarrassed in front of your members? Yes, all the time. Nice. <laughs> what? How? Wow. Wow. No, I mean, I think like uh, th there's like the experience of NSFW early on and now the experience now. It's like. How has it changed? Like, if I start having sex, I like almost know there's going to be a crowd around afterwards, which feels a little bit like. Because it's you. Yeah, it's a little intimidating. People like cheer you on and stuff. And it's, it's like, fine. I don't mind that so much, but I like. I don't. I don't want that. Right, right. <laughs> He's like, focus on your own stuff. But sometimes it'll be like a little like, oh. My like, problem with after Daniel After I comment, is, I'm like. No way. They clap after yeah, you clap it up? Sometimes. Sometimes. They, 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 do, they do for him. Like, there's like, I, there's I know like my, little moments. That's why I have sex in like the back rooms. I'm like, I sneak around. I'll be in the bathroom where you were. I'm my like, man has noticed that I was like, sometimes. Wheezy still. Let me get in there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my head will be in his crotch or like we, like we played and he's noticed crowds form sometimes around us and he's just like because you in action oh yeah we be yeah i like he knows every time i come i'm in action um most most of the part last couple times i, I heard what action. every time i come, come is in well action. that's well that too every time i arrive i will say for <laughs> daniel if i go in and know i have the opportunity to deal with another man 
it's always a man that's there for Daniel. And I'd be like, God damn, this nigga don't even want me. He here for Daniel. <laughs> Daniel be dealing with some fine ass men. My I know. God. I've noticed the that. The one I did, I did make out with one of your booze. Uh. But, <laughs> but they're, they just be so good looking. I'd be yeah. like, damn, Daniel, you just be pulling them, don't you? I'd be giving him high fives. Have you ever had them fight over you? Let's Ooh, not talk about that. Oh, oh wait, literally. Oh, I, oh, I think we had somebody on. No, not like Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, oh, that, oh, oh. All right, y'all. Well, I will. <laughs> all right, y'all want a little bit of tea? Uh oh, wait. All right, and if you want to cut, Hold on, let me get this minute mark. Like, no, no, no. This shit. The tea? Take the minute mark. So, um, I made the list of people we wanted on sex cells, right? Yeah. People we had to have on. Oh, I already know who you are talking about. No, no, no. I'm not gonna say that person's name, but Daniel. <laughs> um, then gave them a list and was very helpful. Gave a list. They were like, hey, we are kind of still looking for this person or some of the people weren't available, right? Like King Noir and Jazz couldn't make it. And so he was making a short list as well. And he was like, these people are great in the community. And he was helping out Fuse. Fuse has an interview with one that they then called me. I'm like, oh, I saw that he put this down. Are we going to go with them? They were like, well, we interviewed this person and um, they were just very emotional about Daniel. <laughs> um, oh, a lot, shit. A lot to say and like, Literally, one of the producers like we couldn't even ask them a question outside of Daniel, and they would just bring it right back up. And she's like, "So we think we're gonna remove them uh, from the list." I was like, "Damn, okay." They ain't falling in love with you. I don't mean that. It's not intentional. Like, I, <laughs> that's what they all say. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Like, I love everyone. <laughs> I said, I said, and he sent you the list. Yeah, we can't. We're gonna just so we'll just go with the one underneath. Yeah, yeah, just keep. <laughs> That's Keep funny. No, I, I will say, like, I love the freedom that you have um, as someone who's bisexual to have your partners not only be aware of each other, be in the same rooms together. You do show each of them attention as much as you can. But what about your I, boyfriend? Do the way you get move is wild. And my boyfriend's just got back. I probably shouldn't talk about him. But I will say that we're working through certain things. Good. Because he's fine. He getting, got, he, I know. He's, he's so beautiful, beautiful. And I love him. He's like, he's an amazing person. And I really do. Like, love him. Um, but yeah, it's like he's been away in St. Martin. Like, he's still not here. So it's hard, like, yeah. It's really hard to do the long distance. And then to come back here after like three months of not being here, like, all right, I need to give you the roster. Like, I need to like go through, like, here's everyone, like, you know, getting more comfortable with that. And um, are you his first experience with openness? No, no. He was probably before. And we were dating when I was like, you know, had my fiance and stuff. Like, we were still dating. So, like, I've always had, you know, multiple partners and stuff. Some more serious than others, but this one in particular is like more serious. So it's kind of navigating through and like dealing with those things of jealousy and those feelings. And do you ever get it? I mean, I don't. I think like once someone's like not interested in me or doesn't feel interested in me, I'm I let them go. Like I'm not. I like love someone, that. I'm not someone to be like, oh, I'm so upset. I'm like, I'm happy for them finding someone. You know, I'm happy for them kind of being with someone. Eventually, I do want to have like. My two partners, my you know husband and wife. I want to have like <laughs> sorry. I was like when, I, I, <laughs> when he said eventually I want to have. I was ready for like my my two partners. <laughs> like, I still as want I both. said <laughs> he really said it was like it was gonna be singular. I love that. And while we're speaking um, of bisexuality, before we get out of here, and of course we want you have another show coming, and we want to talk more about NSFW at the end. Um, but I wanted to get to our home mail um, because this is one I've been trying to actually do, and we just haven't made it to home mail in so long. So I wanted to have this one specifically with you. Um, again, if you guys have any whole confessions or home mail that you want to send to us, be sure to send it to horrible decisions at gmail.com. Uh, this one reads, my boyfriend is bisexual. Hi, Mandy and Weezy. Love all that you do. Your podcast is probably one of the best things to ever come into my life. So I am a 30 year old bisexual black woman living in the Midwest. I am in a long distance relationship since December of last year, and my partner is a 32 year old bisexual male living on the West Coast. The distance is tough, but we've been making it work, and this is the happiest I've been in a while. My partner has always been in non monogamous or swinger relationships, so meeting each other was a curveball neither one of us expected. I'd like to think that because of this podcast, I was very receptive to try my hand in the quote unquote lifestyle, especially since the distance will only allow us to see each other three to four times a year and we both have needs. We agreed to be ethically non-monogamous, but neither one of us would try to form other relationships outside of each other. Just sex and fun was the arrangement. Other than that, my partner had no stipulations and my only stipulation was that we would only have unprotected sex with each other. 
So during our last in-person meetup, my partner admitted to me that he didn't think he could promise that all of his encounters would be protected, and he wanted to be honest about it. Although I appreciate the honesty, it kind of blew my high from this arrangement because I want us to be able to have the nastiest unprotected sex we want when we do see each other. So I need some help from you lovely ladies. Should I just be cool with his candor and accept that we'll have protected sex when we see each other? Or do you guys have some advice to offer so we can navigate around this boundary? I should also probably note that he is heavy in the lifestyle and party scene on the West Coast, which you, which usually involves a lot of drugs. And with that, uh, his inhibitions are usually lowered, which he's also admitted. Love you ladies. Keep up the dope work and can't wait to come to a live show. So... Again, this was a conversation me and my partner had. Like, there is no unprotected sex happening with anyone else. Um, I guess I want to leave this to you as someone who has multiple partners. And if you have the conversation regarding protection, non-protection. Fluid bond. You yeah. know, <laughs> what what would that conversation be and what advice would you give to her? I mean, I think, like, if her partner is going to be engaging in, you know, fluid bonding with other people or having sex without protection, it's very important for them to agree to get tested before they see each other. Mm. I think like him, if he, they know when they're gonna see each other, know when they're gonna travel out to each other. So just make sure a week or two before you're getting tested, you know what your status is, and you're coming into the situation not bringing STDs, not bringing things into the relationship. And I feel that's gonna be one of the key things that'll keep her feeling a little bit more comfortable with the fact that he might be doing that. But yeah, I think it's a really a matter of you know being honest about what your status is and knowing what your status is. If he's engaging and having sex on a regular basis without condoms, without protection, like is he on prep? Is he like actually doing the work to like make sure he's keeping himself safe? Um, I think that's going to be the key for the relationship. If they're going to make it work. I don't see them having to like have only protected sex because that's going to reduce their connection. That's going to reduce their bond together. It'd be better just to like get tested beforehand, be ready, know it's coming up, you know keep your dick in your pants for like a week or two, you're coming to see me, make sure that you have like kind of that dedicated feel. But um, yeah, more so now than ever, like there's fewer and fewer people using protection, using condoms. Um, there, there's not as much of an activity in that. So you're going to have more of those risks. And it's mm. a matter of like mitigating and managing those risks as best as possible. I, I like that he was honest with her, but my fear is, and I think her email is really like well-written. Thank because God. If she I was, didn't even have to like, you know, no, but misspell and all that. Not that. I mean, like, let's just say she had a reaction that was too like, well, fuck you. Then he's going to start lying when he does yeah. it. Mm. And that's what you just don't want to happen. You're going to fuck somebody else raw. Okay. But if you're lying about it, that's how you start spreading STDs. Because then you take away my choice. Right. You know? So. I, I think that's key. It's like, you know, the, it's. Yeah, it, it, it would be better if he was more responsible and just followed the rules and kept to what it is. But if she's seeing that's a problem, she's seeing it's not going to be something that he's going to be able to do, create other things that would work. you know. And if it's about protection, if it's about not getting STI, then make it about that and say like, okay, get tested, make sure you're good, then come here, then let's have a good time. Um, but yeah, I think people get a little bit, you can get caught up on the fluid aspect. Mm -hmm. Like you shared something with someone else without me, or like you shared this fluid, and it becomes that stigma of the STI. It becomes that stigma of like that stronger connection, that stronger bond. Like your cum has chemicals that cause brain reactions in people that cause them to want you more. I mean, but even like, the, you know, that's even, like literally how your cum is built to like release those chemicals from people's brains. So like you're gonna have a stronger agree. bond with people you're fluid with versus people that you're not. Well, even even the stronger connection. I remember uh, when we first uh, went to your club, he kissed uh, two other women, and. I was fine, clearly, with him fucking other women, but the kissing was actually my problem. Of course, he used condoms. You have condoms almost in little areas all over the uh, the club, um, but we brought our own. And so I knew, like, there was no raw sex going on, but the kissing really bothered me because— Kissing during sex? Kissing during sex, prior to sex. I mean, the kissing led up to them having sex, and we were all intertwined, and— um, and I didn't think I would have a problem with the kissing as much, but we had to have a conversation about that because that's what I link to intimacy. Yeah. There's a lot of men who I've had sex with and we didn't kiss because it was just fucking. Bro, I've never had sex with someone that I didn't kiss. I sure did. But to see him, to see him kissing women, that's where I was like, ooh, that's that's intimacy that's that I didn't yeah, want to see. But we ended up having that conversation. Uh and he had a strong reasoning behind it. Being in that space, especially being a black male and being how big he is, he said that that's a way to gauge consent. Yeah. 
kissing back, them coming on to me. Like he does, he never wants to feel like he's too aggressive with anyone. And so he was like, well, the kissing makes me comfortable in this space because I know like there's a level of consent with who I'm kissing to move forward and we can talk about it. You know, he can gauge it with kissing. And I was like, I didn't even look at it like that. So while I'm looking at kissing as being this super emotional attachment, he's like, nah, bitch, I don't need a bitch saying I did anything that I didn't think we had agreed to. And I was like, okay. Sometimes understood. also too, if the kissing is whack and you're like, I'm not really feeling this. Yeah. yeah that's you can tell a lot about like a sexual experience from kissing too. So it's yeah. like it helps you determine. I kissed someone recently who he's a fighter. So maybe that's why I should have expected him to be. He's like a, a boxer or he'd be fighting in the streets like no, a like, world star. <laughs> probably both of them. But he fights like boxing. And when he was kissing me, it was just like a lot. And I was like, dude, because it could go either way. You can hit your face. I hate them type of kisses where it's like, just, it's like, like he be oh my God. To when he bucks me. Teeth. Oh, they do the darts sometimes, like the darting tongue. Uh, people do that when they eat my pussy. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> stop. <laughs> What did Meg the Stallion say? Stop licking my pussy so hard. That shit aggravating. Like, fucking <laughs> <laughs> calm your mouth down. I had to, I remember someone was eating me out and I was younger than two. This was like maybe early 20s. And I took my hand on his face like, shit. Because <laughs> I didn't know how else to, whatever hand motion I could give that like, was what like, do I do to stop? calm, calm down. down. This is not a steak. Anyway, um, I, mean, I wanted to discuss snapless, so. before we get out of here because I'm actually a little unclear. Not that it's confusing, but it is, I guess, if I'm saying that. How do your different membership tiers work? Because I don't really know. It's yeah. changed a few times since yeah. since we went the first time. And yeah, how do they work for people? Um, so right now, uh, people can become tribute members. They pay 19 a month and they get discounted uh, passes for everything. Um, or they become a status member and they get unlimited access. It's like one sixty nine a month. So we keep it very reasonable. That's, I think that's very affordable. Yeah, and now we're yeah, opening we gotta up. work on. We have two new locations that we're opening affordable. up right now. Because <laughs> bitch, be shot. Yo, like, Mandy whoa. and I were looking through the prices together, and I was like, what? <laughs> because because I'm not gonna lie. Like I, again, I've brought people to that space, and they're like, I want to go again. Like I brought other, I brought men and women to the space, and they're like. So I'm going to become a member and I'm, because that's what I tell them. I'm like, go to the website, become a member because you ain't just going to come when I, I don't want to have to feel like I got to go every weekend because now I got to be chaperoned. <laughs> like, no. It's like Mandy's group every week. Like, here, make your here's, friends. My, here's my like, group. Literally, it's like, bring your friends to work or some shit. Like, I don't work here, but that's okay, hilarious. so you have the $19 Yeah, we month. have 19 that gives you half off of tickets and then 169 per month. Um, this clubhouse is actually almost... I mean, it's pretty much at capacity. So we're opening up a second clubhouse. Okay. Come on. Uh, and then a third. So we're doing Williamsburg. We're launching Miami, LA. Uh, we have 38th Street that we're launching, which will be kind of oh, more of like now. a lounge experience. So bar and you can book dom services and stuff like that within the space. I love like that. Insane performances and just like a sexy little meetup. And then there'll be a bus that can take you to the clubhouse if you want to play. Or to oh, the I secondary like Not a ho bus. Ho bus. We, I like that. We're doing the that. bang and bong bus. <laughs> You I can, like the bang you can, bus. You can fuck on the bus. You can smoke some weed on the bus. That's fun. Oh, yeah. I like that. So we're you, creating you a, Is it like a school bus? Yeah. Let me help you with them packages. <laughs> on the magic that, school bus. That sounds like fun. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So the new location we're launching, we just got Laura Desiree. She's going to be our creative director for the new show. Um, we're booking some amazing talents who we've worked with over the years and it'll be you do put on some shows yeah, yeah it's no, gonna be like, I was kind of like, annoyed even, even, when even I the, found out we had to watch a show like Fuse was like oh Daniel's putting on a show for us I'm bro, like it's good dog I don't want to see it but it was good even, <laughs> even, even, well, even the pegging demo yeah that I got pegging demo was that was, good, and yeah. it was it was a quick like Quickie, 15 yeah. minutes um I guess he came that fast <laughs> bro you're he was riding it oh where's the tomato <laughs> um, damn bitch I had a question and you sitting here throwing them badass jokes <laughs> make, me, make me forget my goddamn question oh this is my question so for someone who wants to become a member uh, we'll have the uh, the link in the description but do is there still I remember we talked about it is there still like where you guys need pictures. Yeah. You still have to approve. It's, a, yeah, it's, it's not just you pay and now you no, have no, to No, 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 You still have there's, to get approval, yeah. There's still approval. Uh, well, yeah. And the approval process, um, how long does it take? Uh, it can be up to six weeks. Uh, we try to let people in at a certain like level. So once we hit 100 people who are approved, we'll approve that 100 and then we'll wait for the next 100 and then approve. 
And that way we're okay, not so it is a process. Don't just think y'all just finna be pulling up. Yeah, watch yeah, me yeah. Fuck my nigga. Nah, you have wow. to actually flex. <laughs> oh, and honestly, we're yeah, we, we're creating I need we're creating more exclusive spaces because like okay. again within the membership we have like amazing people like you like we have big. I mean, it, 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 like it, really, it is normally regulars. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, I go it's, there. It's the same people. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We have, I, like, I, regular stuff like I that, do agree. Like we we're adding a we're creating a a new experience for people who are. In a certain caliber, in a sense, like you, yeah. know, you need a little bit more privacy. You want That's to be what around people because you know Weezy arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just like I won't oh be able to God. enjoy myself if I feel we'll like have the club for Mandy and then the special club for Weezy. Like... I mean, nah, I, need, I need a special club. <laughs> I need a special club now. Now, if you guys want to figure out how the actual business of this works, how Daniel gains capital, how hiring his staff works, asking I don't. There's no way Fuse is leaving in uh, when I asked you who cleans up the cum, but. <laughs> I, I, did ask, I was like, so who claims to come? And with no, he's like, well, we have our, did you call them angels? What were they our called? Nymphs. <laughs> and the nymphs. Yo, the fucking camera dude was like, uh. <laughs> And can you run that back and not say come this time? Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, but we, it was just really interesting because again, this isn't show about business and like just talking about how you have to find spaces, legalization of things and membership, safety, how you build community, marketing, PR, which by the way, I don't know who does your PR, Daniel. The, the, one, the one we had the, the phone call God with. The one we had the phone call with. There ain't, that's how we found him. Yeah. yeah. She's amazing. From the New York Post article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Like you have, and it's represented well. So check it out tonight. Hopefully we are all watching it together as a family in New York. And um, yeah. Also, you guys have your talk show you just did. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, we're really, I'm really excited. It's like in partnership with Field. Field is an amazing app. We talk like, about that app all the time. Yo, we got to have it on here. Love Field. Tell and them like, go ahead and drop a check over here. Yeah. Yeah, for no, real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> send some checks over. <laughs> for sure. No, but Field is, is uh, sponsoring the kind of this talk show. It's just like, me speaking to a lot of people who are members or who have been a part of the community or like who know about what NSF is about and you know it's really just talking about you know really honest conversations around sex and and just kind of bringing that feel to people where they can feel a little bit more comfortable you know exploring and doing stuff like that so field has been great and yeah um I'm happy they're working with us. I love it. And and he does have um, a ton of episodes for you guys to listen to. Where will they be able to catch these episodes? Um, so, yeah, we'll have it on our YouTube channel. We'll have it on all the normal podcasting uh, spots. And, and it's if you send video, it right, yeah. I wanna, I'll want to. i probably have it on my um, Instagram TV uh, patrons. I'll make it a public post just so y'all have somewhere to uh, gain access to it as well. But, yeah, Daniel, let everyone know um, where they can find you. Uh, and your website and yeah, yeah. it's uh, just nsfw.house and that okay. gets you to the site and then just Daniel Saint for me and I'll all of that will be in the description of this episode guys we want to thank you all for tuning in to another episode as always we're going to leave you guys with a five minute bonus clip make sure you check out our Patreon for our $20 tier we have videos we have vlogs we have a lot of shit you can also get Mandy has a video fucking her boyfriend on the $20 tier you're tip. fucking lying it's actually Yo. at NSFW she's lying, she's lying. Daniel he filmed it the sex <laughs> tape Yeah, I'm happy we no. filmed it I'm happy we got really, all that really? yeah. remember so when you were going to fuck you don't remember oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, sell it as an NFT. Bruh, no, bro. <laughs> right, releasing the no, NFT. No, she could call it, it New Corp it, Foot. It, it, it doesn't exist. Also, be sure to use promo code WDP and get 15% over at Official Box Owner. Y'all know we have apple cider vinegar gummies, Bork Acid Suppositories, She Orgasms pouches to carry around all of your host shit in um so go on over to officialboxowner.com you can also check me out on period sis every monday and every tuesday on see the thing is wheezy anything else because y'all y'all know she all tv now shit arrogance let's go <laughs> <laughs> nah and check me out on tuesdays on for fact's sake and every monday at 11 p.m sex sells and again tonight is going to be daniel's episode you guys have seen my mom charla I don't know who else they put in between those. But yes, Daniel is actually the favorite episode I that we did. We talked with couples. We it, It's just like a real look inside of his club. And it's done so well. Shout out to Josh, the DP. Shout out to who, Josh. Over Not and over and over. But. I said, <laughs> we have to make this look as high end as it is because his club really is. It's a, really a club that 
for the price, I, like we said, it should be higher <laughs> because it really feels so elevated. And I was like, we got to make sure we shoot this shit right. No funny shit. No silly ass music. <laughs> so, yes, hopefully we'll all be watching it in bed together tonight. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank and you. guys, you are going to get a five minute bonus clip. If you like what you hear, go on over to patreon.com backslash horrible decisions. This has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye. Hi, sluts. It's bonus, bitch. Welcome back to another episode of our cinema. We have been talking about Jocelyn's Cabaret so much, Chad. We weren't able to do it on nothing else. I will tell you guys this. Even if you don't watch the show, we promise we will make it relative, make yes. it fun. It's also such a hot mess that you've probably seen the show. This is just every Ratchet show reincarnated that you've ever watched on TV. I really like it. I really think that what Zeus is doing... Uh, with their content is really really good i'm watching how much the do you bag. think they pay her per episode um let me give you a gauge I, from what well, i know I, from other people so we could take maybe a guess at what we think bad girls club girls get anywhere from two to four thousand an episode love and hip-hop guests three thousand an episode for first timers ten thousand for like well, see no that's off because i know people on love and hip-hop who have gotten right, right, right. Or i'm 1, talking about like for a first show three thousand for like a no name or first timers to 10,000. So you could try to get like anywhere from one to 150. And the other thing with love and hip hop though, it's based on appearance. So, oop, sorry, I had an alarm. But I do know that Quibi was paying about 5,000 an episode for new shows. And Quibi had a larger budget than Zeus, but they didn't have anyone as big as Jocelyn. Jocelyn's putting yeah, in so much Quibi work that I'm shocked. I mean, Quibi also went out in six months. So. They did, but they had mad bread, though. They were giving it all out. That's why I'm like, they were spending it on production, building studios. So they just used their money wrong. But if these shows give it out that much, what do you think Jocelyn's getting on a streaming platform, not TV or cable? I'm not going to hold you. It depends how good her attorney is. I, I know too many people that have done TV who have been like, it's worth it. And I've seen a lot of people who've done TV and said, eh, it ain't worth it because it's really, they can guarantee exposure. So that's where they're like, you can go and get True. hostings and bookings. So I don't know. I, I don't be pocket watching these people. I think that she definitely is a millionaire out of all of the ventures she has, but I don't, Girl, I don't know. How you got to pocket watch for jobs you about to do. We pocket watch to call her daddy shit. Whenever something is going on or if anything, I always want to know what people in my lane are getting paid. That's important, bro. For the job that I have now, I called three people that worked at Audible. I called Charlotte. I mean, I said, I know y'all don't get along. Now they friends. But I said, I know y'all don't get along, but I need to talk to the people that do my job on your side. Like we, I think getting undervalued and undersold is like something that is super important. And we've definitely been conscientious of that too. Like I'm really happy with what we got, you know, for our Black Effect contract. But even now, it's like, what if we grow crazy? Then what? Like, it's it's good to know your competition. And um, not that I will start a stripper show, but she's just so phenomenal that I am curious. Because even when I watched season one, it wasn't given what season two gave. It wasn't given what it's supposed to give, nigga. Season two was gorgeous. She was finer. The bitches was better. Like, that show is really impressive to the point where like now that i'm done and waiting for that next episode now zeus got me clicking on other shit them niggas smart yeah, zeus, bro zeus is really good didn't be really simone one on there too yes yeah, um, did you watch for, it for like the love of be simone or something i just got zeus no i didn't i didn't watch her show okay tt got one too the dude from with the blue hair ah i wish i could I, he's not trans he'd just be putting a wig on i think I don't Girl, know I got everybody uh, got a show on that motherfucker. Anyway, out of all the women or men that have featured, you've got her husband and a therapist. Who would you want to fuck from Jocelyn's Cabaret? Uh, it's damn. What's her name? Hold on, I got the one. She has the short hair, the like short red hair. Lexi Blow. Yes. So the Lexi one that Jocelyn was like. So Lexi, Lexi and Miss Natural. Those are my two favorites. Miss Natural? Maybe she just, just turned me off so much because she'd be going nuts. 
I I like her. So I like Miss Natural and I like Lexi. Those Miss Lexi Blow. Lexi Blow is hot, but that's the lightest I've ever seen you um find somebody attractive. <laughs> you know what's crazy about you saying that? I'm um, sure. My my ex is the same way now. Like we'll go to a club and uh he'll like already know and he says that he's like you don't like light-skinned girls 